We're going to look at cell size and cell shape. So one important thing to remember about cells is that form follows function. What does that mean? Well, it means that cells are shaped to achieve the intended function. We're going to have cells shaped in the way that they're going to be able to function most efficiently. So let's look at some examples. The first one we have here is a nerve cell. And what we can see is that we have a, change my color pen here, we have a cell body, which is right here, with these finger-like projections called dendrites coming out from the cell body. Then we have this elongated portion of the cell body and ending in these axons, which are finger-like projections at the other end. Now, the reason that it's shaped like that is because these cells communicate with each other. So another nerve cell with its finger-like projections will be near this one, have its elongated area, and then its finger-like projections at the end in the axons. What happens is you get an impulse that starts here, travels down through the axon, and jumps to the next cell and can continue on down that cell and jumps to the next cell. So form really follows function here. The next example over here, we have red blood cells. And red blood cells' main objective is to carry oxygen. Because the cells are shaped like little flat discs, kind of like this, they have a nice um, surface area to volume ratio, meaning that a lot of oxygen can diffuse into these cells. So a lot of oxygen, oxygen can be carried by each one of these little discs. And then the next one, is muscle cell. And a muscle cell is made up of these fibers. You can see here all these little fibers put into this cell. And these fibers, you have thin fiber, then a thick fiber, thin fiber, then a thick fiber. And what they're able to do is they're able to um, stretch out, expand, and they're able to contract back in. And that moving in and out, in and out, in and out, is able to allow for the muscles themselves to contract and expand, contract and expand, which is what you need to have happen in muscles. Cell size is also something we want to take a look at. And to understand cell size, you have to understand surface area to volume ratio. And I mentioned that with the red blood cells. What this is, is that as volume increases, the surface area will decrease. So the bigger the cell gets, the less surface area it's going to have. And so that means it has a low surface area to volume ratio. And that's not really good, right? Also, spherical cells are going to have a low surface area to volume ratio. If you have smaller cells or elongated cells, you're going to have a higher surface area to volume ratio. And let me show you why this is important. Here, we have a big cell. And here, we have a small cell. And let's say we have something that needs to go into the big cell and something that needs to get to the middle of the small cell. So this needs to get to the middle of the big cell, this needs to get to the middle of the small cell. How long is it going to take to get to the middle of the big cell as it compared to the little cell? Well, I think it's pretty obvious that the distance from the outside of the cell to the middle of the small cell is a lot less than the outside of the big cell. So it it's going to travel faster into the middle of the small cell. So it, the materials that the cell needs, it's going to get faster if it's small. Also, if it's elongated, it can come in as opposed to spherical.